We use AutoCAD and other software programs to help us create construction documents more efficiently and more accurately than doing everything by hand. That means that whatever we draw or design on the computer must have a way to be shown on paper. That is where printing or plotting comes in. AutoCAD calls printing plotting and plotting printing. It comes from the way lines and arcs are drawn on the board. They were plotted. A drafter would plot points and connect the dots with a straight edge. The term stuck, especially when pin plotters were used. Nowadays, we use inkjet printers and laser printers for most of our plotting needs. Believe it or not, printing an AutoCAD drawing can be very difficult to get exactly right. The reason for that is that there are so many settings involved and ways to plot it can get confusing. Also throw into the mix the number of different plotters and printers out there and adding in their own settings and a CAD user has a real mess to deal with. This video will stay away from settings for specific printers and focus on the AutoCAD settings because that's really all I can do. I don't know what printer you're using. Now there are four main settings to keep in mind when plotting a drawing. The printing device, the paper size, the area to be printed, and the scale to be printed at. So let's open up some files for this chapter. Let's open up the architectural annotation scaling and multi-liters drawing file. So if we open up this drawing, we take a look at it, and we go to the sections and details paper space tab. This drawing is set up to print to a 24 inch by 36 inch size sheet of paper. Well, how do I know that? Well, if I go to the paper space tab, I right click on it and go to page setup manager. This is where you'll go to set up your printing settings. And it tells me right here, plot size 36 by 24 inches landscape mode. Now you can print from anywhere and at any size, meaning that you can print from model space or from paper space. I suggest that you set up your drawing to be printed from paper space. There are several ways to start the printing process. You can just press Control P, and that will open up your printing settings. You can type in the word plot. You can even type in the word print. In AutoCAD, they mean the same things. You can come up to the Quick Access Toolbar, click on the Plot button right there. Or if you go to the Application menu, you can go down to the Print button, and you have several different options. If you click on the plot button, again, that brings you to the plot menu. And you can also right click on the paper space tab and click on the plot button. Any of these methods will be fine and they'll get you to the exact same place. Now, as you can see here, there are several different settings. In fact, there are more here than what you see right now. If I click on this little arrow here, it brings up a whole nother section of settings that you can get to. You're probably seeing now why it may be so complicated to print. Now, as you can see here, there are several settings, and page setup is a predetermined set of settings that allow you to print a specific way. All you'll have to do is set it up, and then once you do, you come and you click it, and all of your settings are applied, and you can just click OK. You're going to do that often. In fact, the majority of the time, you're going to be printing from a page setup. It just saves a lot of time. And exactly where you're going to print to is determined here by the printer or plotter. As you can see, there are several different choices here. Now, AutoCAD comes with several output device settings, like a PDF file or a JPEG or a DWF. We will look at exporting the image files in a different section, so we'll get to that later. But essentially, to print, you're going to come here, find the printer that you have available, and I happen to have an HP OfficeJet Pro printer here and it will only print to eight and a half by 11 size sheets. It's a small personal printer, desktop printer. So you pick the printer that you want. You also have to pick the paper size that you're going to print to. So you select down here where it says paper size. Pick that, and I have all sorts of different options for my little printer. I'm going to print to a letter size. And this preview right here gives you an idea of how big your printer page is going to be. Now some settings display the page size like eight and a half by 11, or they'll just call it letter or 11 by 17, or 24 by 36, or 36 by 24, and so on. Now in most of these cases, the first number will be the width of my paper. I don't have that example here, except for maybe an eight and a half by 13. So the first number shown will be the width of your paper. 
So if this was 13 by eight and a half, it would be 13 inches wide by eight and a half inches tall. So keep that in mind as well. Now this shaded area here is where my print will end up on the paper. And you can change here between portrait and landscape so that it will automatically fit to the page. A lot of times the height and the width of your sheet is determined by the hardware or your printer itself and that can't change. So you'll have to change the landscape and portrait orientations here. This little letter is an indicator of how it's going to look on your sheet. The next setting that you'll have to do is to define the plot area, and that's done right here. Essentially, there are four options. Click this little arrow here. You have display, extents, layout, and window. Now there's a fifth option that's not showing up here because this file isn't set that way, and that's printing to view. If I have a saved named view, then I can print to that view as well. Now if I pick display, it will print what we currently see on our screen. So if I can move this window out of the way, so what we see here on the screen is what we're going to print. I rarely use this setting, to be quite honest, because it's very difficult to get right. What you see on the screen and how you interpret that to look is oftentimes different from the way AutoCAD interprets it. So just be careful, you can use it of course. One setting that I do use often is the extents setting. And you might have noticed that I get a little red line here. That means that when you change your settings and you get a red line on a border, then something isn't fitting in your sheet the way it should be. So that means something won't be able to be printed. It's cutting it off. So when you print to extents, it's just like a zoom extents. It zooms all the way out in that tab, you know, being model space or paper space and it will zoom out to all of the contents of your page. And then that is what's going to be printed. So it basically prints everything that's in that paper space tab. Layout will print according to your page setup definition, meaning your paper size and printer settings. So the layout will print to an eight and a half by 13, as you see here. And when you're in AutoCAD and you set up your layout, there'll be a faintly dashed line that shows up around your drawing area. This is a good setting to use if you have a defined page size or paper size that you're printing to. And it helps you to control the way it's printed on your sheet because that dashed line is a sort of guideline. So anything inside this dashed rectangle is what's going to print. So you just line up everything that way. This one's used quite often. And then this last section is window. Now the window allows you to define a printing area within a window selection. So you can use this to pick your entire sheet if you'd like, or pick on the window again, and you can just select a small area in case you want to print one section or view or something inside just a little bit of something that you want to print out. I'll use window a lot when I'm in model space. You can see here my printing area will fit a little bit more smaller than the larger one, and it's going to fit inside this 8.5 by 13 inch size sheet of paper. Now to the scale and to the plot offset. Plot offset typically is going to stay at 0, 0 all the time. The other option you might want to use is center the plot. That means it's going to take whatever it is you chose to print, whether it be a window, layout, extents, display, and it's going to center it on your sheet of paper. This is another setting you're probably going to use quite a bit. Now the scale. The scale is very important. Typically you're only going to print one to one because you use your scale in your CAD file through your viewports. That controls the scale and paper space is set up as if you were drawing in paper. So everything is scaled in there automatically by default according to how it's going to look on the paper. You define your text size, how it's going to look in paper. So if you want your text to be an eighth of an inch high, then that's what you set your text to be, one to one. Drawing one-to-one -one in AutoCAD is the key, and it keeps everything simplified that way. So typically this is going to be one-to-one. -one. Now in a case here where I only have an 8.5 by 11 size sheet of paper that I can print to, the letter size, and let's say I want to print the full drawing that I have, extents. It's too big to fit on this size sheet of paper. So I'm going to center it. And once I center it, you see here I have the red border telling me that this is not going to fit. I'm only going to get the middle part of my drawing. Well, if I click the fit to paper, it will scale everything down to fit it on that size sheet. And you can see here the scale has been customized itself. 
I can get it to be a little bit better fit if I pick the landscape option right here. It rotates it, adjusts the scale accordingly, and now my full size sheet is going to be printed down and scaled properly to an 8.5 by 11. Now you see the scale is a little off here, so if I try to put a scale on my drawing once I print it out to make measurements, I'm not going to be able to. But if I turn off the fit to paper, I can change my scale here manually. Now you can see it cuts it off a little bit. So my left and right sides are going to be cut off. Now if that's okay, that works. But I can change it, two by two, it's still a little too much. Let's go the opposite direction, one to four. Now it fits in there perfectly and it's at a nice scale that I can actually work with on paper and I'm ready to print. All I have to do now is click OK. Now there's another setting that you're going to need to take care of and that's the plot style table or the pin table. That's up here in the top right. Right now mine is set to none. Mine is set to use the line thicknesses as defined by the layers. It's all up to you which one you're going to use. Now if you're in a company, you typically are going to use a file, it's called a CTB file. That's these right here. And you will have set those up according to your company's needs and desires. It will say, okay, a red color is really thick. And it will say a blue color is really thin or whatever colors that you want to use. And that will control that. And the nice thing about that is that it will force the entire company to use the same colors for printing. So that if I draw with a red line and my colleagues draw with a red line, that red line will always come out to be the same. And so we can work together and we understand each other. We know what each other is doing and how it's going to look visually when we print it out. Otherwise, if you set this to none, you'll just control the thicknesses by the layers. The nice thing about doing that is I know my drawing is going to look this way and I don't have to depend on an external file or an extra file to control my print settings. Now, the downside is that in this drawing, I could be drawing red as thick, and in the next drawing, I could be drawing red as a thin line. It's inconsistent that way. One is not superior to the other. One is not better than the other. One is not preferred to the other. It just depends on your settings. If you're working by yourself, it really doesn't matter what you do. Do whichever way you're more comfortable with. But when you're working with others, it makes a lot of sense to use the CTB files. A lot of these other plot options that we have here is plot and background. The nice thing about this, if it's turned on, is that AutoCAD will process the printing part and then send it and will do all that in the background, allowing you to continue working in your AutoCAD file while it's doing that. The drawback to it is that it takes a lot longer to actually print your drawing. I usually keep that off because I need these things printed out quickly and it just slows it down so much that it really doesn't help. But a lot of times it will. If you have to keep working and the printing speed is not detrimental to you, then you can turn that on. The plot object line weights, this will plot the line weights according to the objects themselves or to the layers. Plotting transparency, you can apply transparency to objects through layer manager or through your objects. And if you turn this on, it will plot that. I have found a lot of times that the transparency settings don't work so well with very specific printers. Sometimes they just have a hard time with it and it's hit or miss. But it's something that I suggest you look in using because it can help you by giving you another layer of control visually for your drawings. This one will plot with the plot styles that are these settings here. This will plot paper space last. That means that it puts the model geometry first. So it prints that out, processes that first, then it puts the paper space on top of it. That's typically what you want to do. It's a behind the scenes setting that's really a legacy setting from old pin plotters but that's still there. You can really turn this off or on and it won't make that much of a difference when you print, but I suggest you leave it on. You can hide paper space objects, you can turn on a plot stamp, and you can save these changes to the layout whenever you print. I suggest you leave this off and I do suggest you create a plot stamp that will help you out quite a bit. And then when you're finished, just click OK and everything will print out. 